Hi, I'm Tom Long. This week, I'll share with you how I received one of Jesus' best known, although arguably least understood parables, the parable of the sower. Although this parable appears in three of the four Gospels, we'll be referencing Matthew's Gospel because it is the lectionary reading for the seventh Sunday of Pentecost, which, as I record this, is this Sunday. We live in the post-industrial age and we no longer have the easy familiarity with agriculture that past generations may have had. But when my neighbors get together, I've noticed that almost everyone has opinions on what species of grass grows best in this region, when to trim their crepe myrtle trees, and just how far back should they be pruned. Usually at least one family member is either a vegetable gardener or an ornamental gardener, you know, someone who's uh, trying to keep the yard looking pretty. So I'm guessing many of you listening have at least that much knowledge of what Jesus is talking about in the parable of the sower. The sower broadcasts seeds much as we would take grass seed and throw it out over a bare spot in our yard. So we can easily visualize Jesus sower out throwing seed onto the ground. That seed, Jesus tells us, is, quote, the message about the kingdom, unquote, of God. It reminds me of Jesus' earlier commission of the 12 disciples to, quote, go proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons, freely you have received, freely give." Unquote. Much later, the Apostle Paul would instruct his protege, young Pastor Timothy, preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season, correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. The message that the kingdom of God is near, or the word as Paul puts it, is a message of great power. But as it turns out, the source of that power is not in us. It's not in Jesus' disciples. There is nothing in our own strength we can do to make our message fruitful. In reality, if you sign up to do as the Apostle Peter directed, to always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have, but do this with gentleness and respect, or if you otherwise become involved in sharing the good news of what God has done, is doing, and will do in this world for all who turn to God, if you sign up to do this, be prepared to fail. Sometimes the Bible feels almost brutal in its fidelity to the facts of how life really is. Yes, obey, go cast the seed of the good news, but stand ready to see that some of that seed will have virtually no effect. Stand ready to see some people appear to respond and then quickly shrink away from the faith community. Sadly, we've even seen some who start well, but over time become so entangled in the things of the world that they are rendered fruitless. Not all of the time, probably not even often, the witness of your life, which opens someone to the witness of the word, will come at a receptive moment to a receptive person. Even then, like a seed that has been sown, the changes may be so slow that they are imperceptible. We may assume nothing is happening. Then, in season, they begin to bear fruit. And then their fruit bearing multiplies and multiplies until this storehouse is overflowing. The faith community sows the word in a nearly infinite variety of ways. We should not grow discouraged because human metrics indicate we are failing. God has not called us to be successful. God has called us to be faithful. Sow the word in season and out of season. Demonstrate God's love for people and God's passion for justice. When given the opportunity, put the reason for the hope that you have into words. In the context of, of a divided church in Corinth, Paul once explained how the people of the church became fruit-bearing. 
He said, I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So, neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose, and they will each be rewarded according to their own labor. We look forward to a reward not based on the scoreboard with points for baptisms, attendance, the size of our budget, or some other however well-intentioned metric, but instead we look forward to a, a reward based on faithfully bringing God's message of love, justice, and life to a world that needs us not to give up, but to keep on keeping on. Go, so. Go, so, and so. Whether we as individuals see it or not, God will grant the increase. the blessed one gives to all wonderful words of life sinners to the loving call wonderful words of life all so freely given wooing us to heaven beautiful words wonderful words wonderful gospel call wonderful words of life offer pardon and peace to all wonderful words of life Jesus only Savior sanctify forever beautiful words wonderful words wonderful words of life